September 1962, Adam Faith was on the front cover of Radio Times, and so were we. Wales Today was making the news. At 10 past 6 on Monday the 17th, we went on air for the very first time. Good evening to you on this most important day in the history of the BBC in Wales. For as you may know, today we're celebrating the... The one thing they were absolutely agreed upon, that it wasn't going to be me to present it. They've all agreed that they didn't want me. And they told me to my face that they didn't want me. They wanted someone new, but you can do it for a couple of weeks, say four or five weeks, to see how we get on. And I was there for years and years and years afterwards. But TV news in Wales actually started five years earlier, with short bulletins presented by another familiar face. When television news in 1957 came to the regions, um, I was given the job of, of you know, being the first nervous face on the screen. Very nervous, wanting to go to the lavatory rather a lot before the, uh, uh, the music started. <laughs> Of course, there was no um, autocue in those days. You had to either hold a script in your hand or you had to remember it. When the red light came on, the adrenaline was really rushing and I was always very, very nervous. I hope it didn't show. I'm sure it did. And that's it for tonight. But don't forget, tomorrow, Wales Today will come to you direct from the exhibition at Sapphire Gardens and we hope to meet many of you there. Good night. Precious little of our early programmes has survived, but we did keep all the film stories we broadcast. Down here in the Wales Today archive, yesterday's news is preserved forever. Some of these cans haven't been opened since the day they were sealed. The referendum on March the 1st is an unusual event for many reasons. A majority against ends the issue and explodes the Assembly proposal. We have come constantly up against uh, a situation where we had to use direct action. Forty years, thousands of stories, one that will never be forgotten. I was in the newsroom in Stacey Road, which is where we were at that time, when Eric Warrelow, our cameraman from Merthyr, came in and he said to me, I've just passed out a van, there's something going on up there. But all the mechanical shovels and bulldozers and excavators in the world are of no use at all in this sort of operation. Because when they get right down into the classrooms where they are at the moment, they have to form the old-fashioned bucket brigade. And these are miners, they're firemen, they're reporters, they're people who've come from everywhere around, determined and desperately trying to get out any young children who might be alive in there. A small shed in the corner of the school's playground has been turned into a temporary mortuary. And I watched two little girls being lifted gently from under tons of mud, still holding hands. This, of course, became the biggest, the biggest um, story that uh, one could ever work on, and the worst, the biggest and the worst. It's, I've never, ever forgotten it, and never, ever will. Ironically, today is the last day of school. This afternoon, the children were due to start their half-terms holiday. This is Brian Hoey in Abervan. You know, in February, the BBC starts a new television service, BBC Wales. Two years after Wales Today launched, the country got its own dedicated channel. Our presenters and reporters quickly became its most familiar faces. The atmosphere was one of excitement, and you had to kind of sit on this excitement if you were in front of camera, and someone who was very, very good at that was... Um, John Barron. Nobody read the news better than John. Nobody could uh, uh, read English prose better th than he could. The Llanulted Wells murder case. At a special court at Bilth Wells today, Reginald David Walker, a forestry worker, was remanded in custody until February the 21st, charged with murdering his lodger, Glyn Thomas, who was found shot dead in Walker's house at Llanulted Wells yesterday. He was just an absolute gentleman. He, he was a very dignified kind of person. He could just come in, sit down, read the scripts, read them with that lovely, lovely voice of his. Ah, oh, he's so dignified. Lovely. 
Sadly, John Darren isn't here to celebrate 40 years of Wales today, but somebody else is. Good evening. Welcome to Wales Today. I'm Noreen Bray. And I'm Elvin Thomas. An appeal it's difficult to ignore. Elvin. Members of the local government... It was this remarkable feeling. We were there in people's homes at tea time. And I'll never forget um, an eminent barrister um, coming up to me and saying that from the age of 10 right through to when, when, he, when he left university, we had been there with him at home, and he'd grown up with us, and it was a heck of a shock, showed me how old I was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, I do have a client who tells me I interviewed him when he was 10. <laughs> you know, so you, you come to terms with those things. It's usually taxi drivers, because they can get a good look at you in the mirror, and they think, yeah, she looks familiar. Uh, but I mean, it's 13 years since I've left, and I still have people saying, I haven't seen you recently, you know, have you been on holiday? Most of us are probably in need of a facelift or two by the time we get to 40. And Wales Today's had the odd nip and tuck too. Just in, Welsh farmers have failed in their bid to buy back the collapsed farms cooperative Welsh quality lamb. The big hair, the big earrings, everything was very 80s in those days, big and brash, whereas hopefully everything has calmed down, very much toned down now. The, the whole look of the news presenters changed somewhat in 15 years, I'm glad to say. Good afternoon. Forensic expert. This is the lane where the police patrol saw the hiker who turned out to be so. Solid... its selling price for the 4,000 vehicles is £300,000. Well, you always think that you look about the same, don't you? That's the problem. I mean, yeah, you put on a few pounds. Um, but it's curious, isn't it, how your hair goes lighter over the years? You know, I mean, I look at this woman behind me and she seems to have very dark hair and it seems to be terribly curly. And now I'm not quite like that. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> The weather here in Wales is always changeable, and the way Wales Today has brought you your weather forecast over the years has changed a lot as well. And now let's have a look at today's weather forecast for Wales. Apart from the odd shower on the west coast, it'll be a sunny but rather cold day. Now, hopefully, something will sound just as good. That bank holiday weather forecast. Here's Helen. Thanks, Kevin. Yet again, it's When we got our own today, weather people, Wales nobody could have forecast how popular they'd become. I've grown up watching the programme for many, many years. It's, you know, what I used to watch when I came home from school, before I did my homework, before I went to bed, and amazingly, I got the opportunity to work on the programme, and I had a fantastic time. Well, if it's not raining with you at the moment, it soon will be, and as you can see, it is very windy, so wrap up warm. But hey, you've got Derek now, and he's fantastic. Time for a look at what the weather has in store with Derek Brockway. Derek. Good afternoon, Jamie. Well, the weather's on the change now. We had the camera in the Met Office on the wall there, and I used to sit behind my desk and look up at it. Well, the southeast of Wales looks like remaining mostly dry. But of course, in, because I was sat down, I, I couldn't bend my knees or wave my arms around a bit, so it's much better these days being in the studio. Well, Sarah, I expect Glamorgan would have liked a drop of rain this afternoon, but as it was, much of Wales stayed dry. And the good news... Excuse me, I've dropped my plunger here. It... The people who launched Wales Today had no idea the programme would still be on air 40 years later. But thanks to you, it's as popular as ever. So thanks for watching. The next Wales Today is tomorrow. More of Wales tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>